car sharing and ride sharing. Let's start with that. So how does a company like Ford position itself for, for that kind of a future? Where I assume, as you say, people will not be looking to the car ownership, individual car ownership will be perhaps penalized and in any case, not something that, that the next generation of, of consumers will perhaps value as much as we did. How does Ford position, what, I mean, are we looking at um, you know, are you looking at? Are you expecting in these, especially in these mega cities, significantly smaller sales? And are you focusing then on particular types of model? I mean, how does? What are you doing to prepare for an age when, you know, in 10, 20 years' time, when a huge amount of car, car mobility may be done through sharing? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that we're looking at is, as 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 we look at this kind of situation, is what is the size of the market? To your point, and. Uh, you could argue that in city centers, there'll be less density of vehicles, which means less cars sold. On the same token, as we're developing autonomous vehicles, uh, there's lots of talk about autonomous vehicles. There's different levels of autonomous vehicles, but let's, let's take the level that the driver doesn't have to be involved. That's what they call a level four vehicle. We're working on those. Now, you could say there'd be less vehicles sold, but at the same time, we're changing our business model to look at this as vehicle miles traveled. And when you look at it that way, from a, which is different from a business model that we've had for many, many years, which is just based on vehicles sold, it changes your mind wonderfully to think about what kind of services can we offer via our products because we have a trusted brand. What does that mean for us? And in the case of the size of the industry, I could also argue that with the case of autonomous vehicles, which are running 24-7, that the actual mileage on those vehicles will accumulate a lot more than a personally owned vehicle, plus the servicing, that, that can actually be a bit of an offset. So we're thinking of all these things right now, and the way we deal with it is like any good, we go out and experiment. Mm. We started at the beginning of last year 30 different experiments around the world. We're learning a lot from that right well, now. Well, give us an example. What, what, an example what, what, in London, mm. we have something called GoDrive. It is a, a service where a customer can reserve a vehicle and pay by the minute, insurance, gas, all, all, all is included, and actually have guaranteed parking in other parts of London. We now have 25 How locations. did you manage that? I'm like, you can never find a park, <laughs> park in London. There's <laughs> probably a few parking tickets involved. Yes. <laughs> nonetheless. You don't uh, offer to pay the parking tickets. Yeah, though, well, we've kind of baked it into yeah. the price. Um, but we're learning a lot of things through that. and and and. When you look at entrepreneurs and you look at, and this is one of the biggest challenges as a big company, we're 113 years old, we're learning a lot of things from uh, you know, small startups. And one of the keys around small startups is how do you allow for experimentation, not have every I dotted and T crossed and says, you know, here's the plan and here's how we're going to do this over three years. No, you get in there, you start experimenting, you learn, you confirm the things that work, you then pivot on the things that don't, and we're going to be using that. We're doing... Uh, car sharing in Germany, a different experiment, where we're in 80 uh, cities and towns, mainly smaller towns, and we're integrating our dealers as locations mm. for people to do. We're learning some things there.